Please rise for the commencement processional.
Good morning, everybody. I'm Wendy Duncan, Provost and Dean of the College of Pharmacy, and it's my distinct pleasure to preside over today's ceremony. You can please sit down. <laughs> In consideration of our ceremony, we ask that you silence all your electronic devices. Please feel free to take photos throughout the ceremony. We do have professional photographers here, and video will be also recorded, so that will be available for you in the future as well. The ceremony will also be live streamed through the CHSU Facebook. It's now with great pleasure I introduce Florence Dunn, founding president for California Health Sciences University. Good morning. It's my honor to welcome trustees, administration, faculty, staff, and community leaders here to celebrate our California Health Sciences University College of Pharmacy class of 2019. Our pharmacy graduates are very special. They courageously placed faith in us and helped shape our new university. And I'm proud to say that they have blazed the path for decades of students to follow. Of course, our graduates didn't do it alone. I'm delighted to see so many family and friends of graduates here today. They have made sacrifices to ensure that our graduates succeed. Graduates, can you please stand? Can you please turn around and thank your friends and families who were with you every step of the way? Okay, now you can be seated, please. <laughs> our board of trustees, and especially our founders, are special people as well. Their leadership and commitment to improve the quality of life in this valley inspires all of us at CHSU to passionately provide a student-centered, results-oriented, educational environment. May I ask our trustees and founders to please stand and be recognized. Our trustees' leadership is complemented by leadership at all university levels. I'm grateful for our university and college administration, faculty and staff, and it's my privilege to share this day of celebration with them. And now, to this impressive group of healthcare providers, our future doctors of pharmacy and class of 2019 at California Health Sciences University. You began your journey with us in 2015 with your dreams of becoming a pharmacist. You arrived with determination and you are proof that dreams do come true and possibilities are endless when you believe in yourself. While you were the second class to matriculate in our College of Pharmacy, you were never second priority nor second in our hearts. You embraced the mentorship from the first class and our faculty and really took many of our programs to the next level. Your leadership and passion have been impressive. Your contributions towards building our university will always be cherished and remembered. Today, you will embark on a new professional career, dedicating your lives to helping your patients, and we are counting on all of you to help transform healthcare in our region. Today, we celebrate you as you begin your legacy. You are our legacy, 
and we are extremely proud of the professionals you have become. We hope we can count on you to continue believing in CHSU and stay connected as alumni. I also hope you remember this momentous occasion as you relay your experience at CHSU to your children. Please know that you will always hold a special place in my heart and in the hearts of our university. Although gaining knowledge in your profession is essential, it is ethics and kindness that forms your soul. I want to leave you with this one request. During your life's journey, leading up to accomplishing this huge milestone today, many doors were opened for you, and someone let you through. As you cross this threshold today, please turn around, open the door, extend your hand, and lead the ne next person through. Congratulations, and it has been my privilege and honor to serve as your president. Thank you, President Dunn. Now I would like to recognize our graduates who earned academic honors. Wearing a gold honor cord were the graduates who earned the academic honor of summa cum laude with a grade point average of 4.0 to 3.9. Please stand and be recognized. Wearing a silver honor cord with the graduates who earned the academic honor of magna cum laude with a grade point average of 3.89 to 3.7, please stand and be recognized. Wearing a red honor cord with the graduates who earned the academic honor of cum laude with a grade point average of 3.69 to 3.5. Please stand and be recognized. Please give our graduates who earned academic honors another round of applause. Next, I'd like to recognize our graduates who have received graduate awards from our partners, many of which are nationally recognized distinctions. Please hold your applause until I have announced all of the winners. The American Institute of the History of Pharmacy Award winner is Neil Ricolia. The Merck <laughs> The Merck Manual Award for Academic Excellence winners are Matthew Lopez and Min Hien Nguyen. The Mylan Pharmaceuticals Excellence in Pharmacy Award winner is Raymond Vo. The Walgreens Ambassador to Retail Community Pharmacy Award winners are Christopher Vang and Levitt Rajora. And then finally, the Wal Walter Kluwer's Award of Excellence winner is Ashley Olmsted. Please join me in congratulating these award re recipients. We take great pride in the customs and practices that are uniquely CHSU. We are proud that our entire campus community embraces our mission and values and puts them into action in everything we do. We feel this is a part of what sets us, sets us apart. So our graduate award criteria reflect our mission and our seven values. All CHSU gradu graduate award recipients were nominated by their student colleagues, administration, faculty, and staff. We will recognize now this year's CHSU value award recipients. Again, please hold your applause until I've announced all of the recipients. The CHSU Value Award for Collaboration 
is Leanna Marie Winnick. The CHSU Value Award for Diversity is Leticia Ordinez. The, the CHSU Value Award for Excellence is Christopher Vang. The CHSU Value Award for Growth is Lalit Rajora and Jennifer Leva. The CHSU Value Award for Innovation is Armin Nabanyan. The CHSU Value Award for Integrity is Carrie Kerr And the CHSU Value Award for Stewardship is Salam Kabani. Please give these deserving graduates a round of applause. The most prestigious of our awards is the Granville Holmes Outstanding Graduate Award. This highest honor aligns with our university mission. Our founders, the people who created CHU, CHSU, also created Granville Homes over 40 years ago. They believe in our mission so strongly that they have committed to sponsoring our most prestigious award. The Granville Home Outstanding Graduate Award recognizes the graduate, graduating student in the top 20% of his or her class who demonstrates excellence within our university's mission setting. A compassionate, highly trained, intellectually curious, collaborative, and adaptive leader capable of meeting the healthcare needs of the future. Will the 2019 Gravel Holmes Outstanding Graduate Award recipient please stand and be recognized, Lena C. Vang. Thank you, Lena. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor. We are proud of you and all of your accomplishments at CHSU. It's now my great honor to introduce Dr. Thomas Patton, President Emeritus of St. Louis College of Pharmacy, to deliver, to deliver our graduation address. I was proud to serve as the Dean at St. Louis College of Pharmacy while Dr. Patton was President I truly admire and respect him, and I think he's a fabulous speaker. <laughs> You're lucky. While dedicating most of his career to being a leader in higher education, Dr. Patton has also spent a considerable amount of time in the pharmaceutical industry and in professional and scientific associations. He's authored approximately 70 scientific and professional articles and books and has given over 75 invited research and professional lectures worldwide. He is a fellow of both the American Pharmacists Association and the American Association for the Advancement of Sciences. He is also a founding member, fellow, and past president of the American Association of Pharmaceutical Scientists. Since retiring from St. Louis College of Pharmacy, he has served as a consultant to both large and startup pharmaceutical companies in the United States and internationally. Currently, he's serving as consultant for research at California Health Sciences University. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Thomas Patton. If I can find the right tab in the book. Good morning. President Dunn, Provost Duncan, trustees, faculty, staff, proud family members, and members of the class of 2019. It's definitely an honor for me to be here today and to participate in your commencement ceremony. Before today, I've spoken at 16 commencement ceremonies. To the best of my knowledge, no one who attended any of those ceremonies remembers anything I said. <laughs> so what makes me think that today will be any different? Your diplomas stand before you, and so the only hope I have is that although you might not remember what I say, none of you will leave before I finish. 
In the words of Doonesbury cartoonist Gary Trudeau, commencement speeches were invented largely in the belief that outgoing students should never be released into the world without being properly sedated. I will do my best. Before embarking on some messages that I want to leave you with today, I thought I would share with you the advice that some others have given to graduates at commencement speeches. One of my favorites comes from former President George W. Bush. He once said at a commencement ceremony, to those of you who have received honors, awards, and distinctions, I say, well done. And to the C students, I say, you too can be President of the United States. <laughs> Another speaker said, you'll never have more energy, enthusiasm, hair, or brain cells than you have today. One other said, be kind to your knees. You'll miss them when they don't work anymore. And the final one that I want to leave you with was a speaker that provided some health care advice. He said, wear sunscreen, because the long-term benefits of sunscreen have been proven, whereas any advice I will provide you has no basis in fact. So when one researches how to prepare a commencement speech, uh, what you generally see is the advice of experts that say there should be three elements in a commencement speech. Humor, messages, and stories that reinforce the messages. I've already given the humor part my best shot, so let me proceed with the messages and stories. When I thought about the messages that I wanted to leave you with today, I realized that each of them were things that have affected me personally and impacted my own life. And therefore, the stories that I will convey to you are largely personal ones as well. I've chosen to give a title to my remarks today, and that title is, Are You Finished or Just Beginning? You see, there's a conflict here. Graduation represents a finish or a completion of a degree, but commencement represents a beginning, the beginning of your professional life. You may think you're finished because you've completed a major accomplishment in your life, and you have, and you deserve to celebrate and be proud. But I assure you that what you do for the rest of your personal and professional lives will go much further in defining your legacy than anything you've accomplished here. Graduation is the end of an academic chapter in your lives. Commencement is the beginning of the rest of your lives. So I'll answer my question. You're not finished, you're just beginning. So what are the messages? First one I want to leave you with is, as you begin your personal and professional lives, keep an open mind. Be prepared. Things will happen that are unexpected. You can shape your future, you can plan your future, but you cannot fully predict it. Many of you, I'm sure, have in your mind a defined path for your future, just as I did. It's good to have a plan like that. It's also good to be adaptable. Things change in our lives and in our profession in ways that we can't always foresee. My own career path serves as an example. I chose pharmacy as a profession because of a single view that I had, and that was as a pharmacist working in a local community pharmacy, independent pharmacy. I have no pharmacists in my family. All I knew about pharmacy was my local independent pharmacist, Doc Bridges, standing behind the counter in his white coat. I used to watch him as I sat at the soda fountain. I thought he was cool. That was my sole view of pharmacy. Little did I know at the time that as I sat at the soda fountain sipping my Coke, Doc Bridges was in the back sipping the grain alcohol. <laughs> Nevertheless, in, in about eighth grade, I set out to be a community pharmacist. My career path was set, or so I thought. Along the way as a pharmacy student, I met the director of pharmacy at a small local hospital 
who offered me the opportunity to work in the pharmacy while I was a student. Later on, I met a professor when I was in pharmacy school who gave me the opportunity to work in his laboratory. That led to graduate school and work in his laboratory for my graduate degrees. Ultimately, I became a pharmacy professor, then I became an administrator in a large university, then I moved to the pharmaceutical industry and directed research and became an executive. Finally, I ended up serving as president of a college. Guess what I never did? Be an independent community pharmacist. That's not a bad thing, but my path and the opportunities that were presented to me led me in a different direction. The point is that my education and an open mind prepared me to seize opportunities as they presented themselves. Yours will too, so keep an open mind. Your world will be full of unanticipated opportunities. An open mind is, a prepared mind is there to take advantage of opportunities that you can't currently predict. As an aside, I doubt that President Dunn's planned career path included being president of a university. My second bit of advice is to be involved. Be involved in all the things that matter to you, both personally and professionally. Things don't just happen. People make things happen. In the years you've been at CHSU, your profession has evolved and it will continue to evolve over the course of your careers. I assure you that the world of pharmacy that you enter today will be different at the end of your career than it is today. Some of you, while you are here, through your involvement in professional activities, have participated in the process of change. Through your participation, you may not only have witnessed change, you may have helped shape it. I went to college during some very turbulent times, the Vietnam War era. You graduates are too young to fully understand the turmoil that existed in our country and on our campuses at that time. Our country was seriously divided. College campuses were hotbeds of activism. The National Guard was called to my campus. I was tear gassed out of my apartment and some classes more than once. There were a lot of things that happened that looking back are not things to be proud of. But those during that time who were involved affected change that altered the course of history. For better and sometimes for worse, the activism and involvement shaped the future of our country. Those who stood by, no matter which side they were on, played no role, but had to live with the outcomes. I often wonder what things would be like today if everyone during that time had been passive and simply accepted the status quo. <clears throat> Over the course of your careers, there'll be those who will be discussing and debating the future of your profession. The outcome of those discussions and debates will impact your own personal professional futures and potentially impact your livelihood. We have the option of letting others decide our fate or being part of the process that determines our fate. There are too many folks out there who expect someone else to make things better. If you're not part of the process, you have to live with the outcomes, but you abrogate your right to complain. Involve yourself in your profession. Involve yourself in your communities. Involve yourself in your country. Make them better. Help shape your own future. It's an obligation of being a professional and an educated citizen. Will Rogers once said, even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. My third bit of advice is to give, give back. Find some things you can be passionate about and commit to them, your time and your resources. It may be your church, it may be your community, it may be one or more of many worthy, worthy charitable causes, it may be your alma mater. Take care of what you need to take care of, but along the way, give back 
your life will be richer for it. My own story is my parents never went to college. In fact, my, my father never finished high school. They sacrificed a lot to ensure that I and my siblings got an education that they didn't have the opportunity to have. They never understood exactly what it was that I did in my career, but they were proud. My education that they made possible meant everything to me. By the time I was in a position to help to pay them back, they were gone. So I've honored them by establishing scholarships at two universities in their names. Every year when those scholarships are awarded, it's not my name that's read, it's their names. And that makes me very proud. So even though my parents are gone, they live on helping other students, just like they helped me. So they are forever helping others. And because of that, in hearing their names read every year makes me proud, and my life is richer because of that. If you decide to give back, I assure you that you will make your own lives richer as well. Let me give you a final quiz. Name 10 Nobel Prize winners. Name the last 10 Best Picture Academy Award winners. Name the last 10 astronauts to go into space. I bet all of us would fail that quiz. Instead, name a teacher who helped you. Name a friend who helped you through a difficult time. Name someone who taught you something worthwhile. I bet we could all pass that quiz. The lesson that I want to convey is the people who really make a difference are people who help others, who care about their families, and get involved in making their communities and their worlds a better place. You may think that you've sacrificed a lot to get to this point, and you have. But in reality, you're also much luckier than a vast percentage of the rest of the world who have no hope of having access to the education that you have. Share your good fortune. Share your time. Share your expertise. Share your resources. It's said that graduation is one of four great milestones in life. The other three are the day you were born, the day you die, and the day you pay off your college loans. <laughs> so are you finished or are you just beginning? Is today the end of your journey or are you open to the unanticipated opportunities that may come your way and are you ready to seize upon them and adapt to them? Are you going to be involved, or are you going to be content to be a bystander and let others determine the future of your personal and professional life? And finally, are you going to be someone who gives back and makes a difference? If you can answer yes to those three questions, today should be the beginning of a long and successful personal and professional journey that will leave you fulfilled, both personally and professionally, and will leave your community, your world, and your profession a better place. So I leave you with good luck and Godspeed, and remember to wear sunscreen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Patton. You've been instrumental in the field of pharmacy and research and a true inspiration to us all. We're very excited now to begin the doctoral hooding ceremony. I would like to invite Dr. Jeremy Hughes to read the candidate names and Drs. Patty Habbard and Will Ofsted to hood the candidates. Thank you, Provost Duncan. 
Candidates, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your hood. Provost Duncan will present the diplomas to these candidates as, as they have completed the requirements of the Doctor of Pharmacy. If the first uh, row would like to stand up and uh, come up, that would be great. Tina Oni Bigdoyan. Jessica Tyler Brooks. And she's a cum laude. Stephen Michael Bruce. Jamie Nock Bui. Jamie Nock Bui. Jin Yong Chang, she cannot be with us today. Andrea Mary D'Souza.
Rosa de la Paz. Jason Edward Deloach. Lena Sarah Gashaw. Tade Gazarian. Navjot Goitra. Navjot cannot be with us today. <laughs> Youngin June Kumlade. Youngin cannot be with us today. <laughs> Salam Kabani. Harneet Kar, summa cum laude. Cecilia Q. Cecilia cannot be with us today. Amanpreet Kar Kuna, Kuner, Summa Cum Laude. Amanpreet cannot be with us today.
Ivan Peter Kostrykin. Ivan is a summa cum laude. <laughs> Jennifer Vanessa Leva. Jonathan Daniel Lopez. Matthew William Lopez. Matthew is a summa cum laude. Wilson Lu Lee. Nancy Ma. Sarah Mensa. Armin Nalbenzion.
Gabriel Negretti. Yvonne Wynn. Johnny Hui Kang Nguyen. Hien Cho Nguyen. Hien is a summa cum laude. Ashley Michelle Olmstead. <laughs> Ashley is a summa cum laude. Leticia Ordonez.
Parth S. Patel. Priyank Patel. Julianne Perry. Alexander Can Pham. <laughs> Alexander is a cum laude. Lalit Sukram Singh Rajora. Lalit is a cum laude. Neil B. Racolia. Kristen Rose. Inga Z. Sarkeesian.
Christopher Shane. Christopher is a magna cum laude. Baldev Singh. Sia Tao. Mai Fong, Joanne Truong. Wabuse Ume. Chai Vang. Chua Vang.
Christopher Vang. Christopher is a summa cum laude. Lena C. Vang. <laughs> Lena is a summa cum laude. Raymond Trong Bo. Carrie Kerr Vu. Scott Welker. Leanna Marie Winnick. Leanna is a cum laude. Alexis Woods. Alexis is a cum laude. Johnny Ming Yang.
Miley Yang. Congratulations to our graduates. Congratulations to our candidates for receiving your CHSU doctoral hood. Now, it is my honor to initiate the presentation of the candidates. Will the class of 2019 Doctor of Pharmacy candidates please stand? Madam President, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Pharmacy, it is my distinct pleasure to present these candidates who are duly approved to receive the Doctor of Pharmacy degree for which they are entitled. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of California Health Sciences University, I do now confer upon you the Doctor of Pharmacy degree to which you are entitled with all the rights, privileges, and obligations thereunto pertain. Congratulations. Please move your tassel from the right to the left. <laughs> Doctors, you may now be seated. Thank you. Congratulations to my fellow pharmacists and colleagues. It's my pleasure that I introduce Dr. David Fuentes, Executive Associate Dean for the College of Pharmacy, Chair of Clinical Sciences and Professor to lead the graduates in the oath of the pharmacist. Thank you, Provost Duncan, and congratulations to all of you the 54 new PharmDs that have joined this noble profession of pharmacy. As President Dunn stated, you are now entitled to all the rights, privileges, and obligations that pertain to the Doctor of Pharmacy degree. The oath of a pharmacist adopted by the American Pharmacist Association is a distinct reminder of those rights, privileges, and obligations. So it is my honor to lead your, you as new graduates and doctors in the reading of the oath of the pharmacist. If you might be able to graduates, doctors, please turn to page 10. And now as doctors, please stand so that you can join me in reading the oath of the pharmacist. If there are any pharmacists in the room up on stage that would like to also join in the oath reading, you're invited to stand up and do so. I'm going to start the oath now. I promise to devote myself to a lifetime of service to others through the profession of pharmacy. In fulfilling this vow, I will consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns. I will apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for my patients. I will respect and protect all personal and health information entrusted to me. I will accept the lifelong obligation to improve my professional knowledge and competence. 
I will hold myself and my colleagues to the highest principles of our profession's moral, ethical, and legal conduct. I will embrace and advocate changes that improve patient care. I will utilize my knowledge, skills, experiences, and values to prepare the next generation of pharmacists. I take these vows voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility with which I am entrusted by the public. Thank you all so much, doctors. You may be seated. And congratulations again to all of you. Please give it them a hand. Thank you, Dr. Fuentes. One of our CHSU traditions is to have each new cohort of students write their own class pledge of professionalism. The class pledge is mounted outside their classroom and signed by all students in the class as a constant reminder. You see, this practice reinforces our team culture and shared accountability. And when students have a hand in creating their own pledge, we feel they are more apt to abide by it. So now, it's my pleasure to in introduce Dr. Lena Vang, class of 2019 president, to lead her colleagues in the class of 2019 Pledge of Professionalism. Thank you, Dr. Duncan. I'm proud to have the honor of leading my fellow pharmacists in reading of our class of 2019 Pledge of Professionalism. Colleagues, would you please turn to page 11 in your program and stand? Ready? As a student of pharmacy, I believe there is a need to build and reinforce a professional identity founded on integrity, ethical behavior, and honor. This development, a vital process in my education, will help to ensure that I am true to the professional relationship I establish between myself and society as I become a member of the pharmacy community. Integrity will be an essential part of my everyday life, and I will pursue all academic and professional endeavors with honesty and commitment to service. To accomplish this goal of professional development as a student of pharmacy, I will develop a sense of loyalty and duty to the profession by contributing to the well-being of others and by enthusiastically accepting responsibility and accountability for membership in the profession. Foster professional competency through lifelong learning, I will strive for high ideals, teamwork, and unity within the profession in order to provide optimal patient care. Support my colleagues by actively encouraging personal commitment to the oath of the pharmacist and the code of ethics for pharmacists as set forth by the profession. Dedicate my life and practice to excellence, and this will require an ongoing reassessment of personal and professional values. Maintain the highest ideals and professional attributes to ensure and facilitate the confidential relationship required of the pharmaceutical caregiver. The profession of pharmacy is one that demands adherence to a set of ethical principles. These high ideals are necessary to ensure the quality of care extended to the patients I serve. As a student of pharmacy, 
I believe this does not start with graduation. Rather, it begins with my membership in this professional college community. Therefore, I will strive to uphold this pledge as I advance towards full membership in this profession. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Dr. Vang. I can proudly say that as students, this impressive group of individuals were enthusiastic about sharing their feedback and making their voices heard. The next young professional was nominated by her peers to share her reflections at graduation. She's been a strong advocate for her peers and a leader within the university since her first year. Her passion, commitment, an uncompromising resolve will take her far in advocating for her patients and the pharmacy profession. So it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Vianna Winnick. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Duncan. Um, greetings, friends, family, preceptors, faculty, and most of all, my fellow graduates. I want to start by saying what an honor it is to be standing in front of you delivering this address. We have spent the last four years together, and it has been an absolutely crazy ride. <laughs> I'm not sure how it can feel like time moves so slowly and so quickly simultaneously, but our stretch in pharmacy school is a complete blur. Through all the hours and years we've spent with each other, one quality is for certain. You all are the most tenacious bunch of people I have ever met. We all took a risk by attending a small university, and not only have we made it to graduation, but the university and its student organizations thrive during our attendance here. We took what the inaugural class built for us and enhanced it by forming new committees, such as the HOPE Committee, and starting new organizations like Phi Lambda Sigma. We served more in the community by volunteering in health fairs outside of the school, interacting with professionals in other fields, we pushed ourselves to further our education through SAFE, attending conferences, and working in our spare time as we made the shift from being students to practitioners. From our dedication to community outreach to advocating for our profession through organizational events, our effort has made a lasting impact on our community and future students of CHSU. It seems like just yesterday, we were all meeting for the first time at orientation. While we were nervous to meet each other, there was an air of excitement about beginning the final phase of our educational journey. During orientation, we began to learn the alphabet soup of pharmacy acronyms, IRATS, TRATS, TBATS, CPHA, APHA, CSHP, ASHP, PDC, KY, even our school, CHSU, is an acronym. That first week we went to Boomers, Buffalo Wild Wings, bowling. I remember thinking, this is great. How bad can pharmacy school possibly be? Once classes began, the real work began. Besides being in class from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day, there was the endless studying after school to prepare for the next day's sessions. We all quickly realized that the fun of orientation was a novelty, and the transition to becoming a pharmacist was beginning. Dr. Coley pushed us in our mathematical knowledge, claiming it's easy, see, as he showed us complicated allegation problems on the projector. And then there was Dr. Goldfarb in biochemistry, telling us all about his outdoor adventures and using his pictures on the exams. First semester ended, and we thought, OK, pharmacy school is totally manageable. But then second semester began. <laughs> Immunology, pharmacokinetics, and pharmacology plagued all of us. 
The study hours grew longer, but in addition, many of us became involved in student organizations. We learned how to work smarter during second semester because we realized there just wasn't enough hours in one day to accomplish everything we needed to accomplish. This was a great skill to learn because just when we thought the workload couldn't get any harder, second year started. Our first look at therapeutics, the work workload increased tenfold, but we had each other to help support us through the learning curve. By third year, we knew what to expect, although the course load became the most intense it had ever been, with infectious disease and all the bugs and drugs. Somehow, we still found time to be with our friends, go bowling, have barbecues, play Jenga, celebrate holidays in the classroom, pie our teachers and classmates in the face, and create lasting memories. Fourth year brought up our experiential rotations. Transitioning from being in the classroom all day to being out in the professional world was an adjustment, but a welcome one. Not seeing each other all day every day was bittersweet, but exciting as we realized this is one of the final steps to graduation. While on rotations, you learn an immense amount, not only about yourself and the medical field, but your comfortability and how much you've grown since first year. On my last rotation, one of the staff pharmacists announced she was leaving her full-time job in Fresno to pursue a per diem job in Southern California. Seeing how much she loved her job, I asked why she was moving. Her response is something that has stuck with me, and I hope it sticks with you today. She said she felt she was too young to be so complacent in her current job. Her job in Fresno was supposed to be temporary, until she gained some experience. She felt she needed to grow more by putting herself outside of her comfort zone. So many times in pharmacy school, we have grown as individuals by doing something uncomfortable. Don't lose that desire after graduation. We won't continue to flourish and be better practitioners if we don't further our learning. Continue to read updates about the profession, attend conferences, get involved with organizations, whether it's being an active member locally or even taking on a national position. Never stop being curious. When we grow as individuals, we will also strengthen the profession of pharmacy. As our time together comes to an end, I'm reminded of the journey we took to get here. After the arduous hours spent studying in class, studying after class, clarifying if we need to no drugs or no drugs, <laughs> and spending a year fulfilling experiential hours, which translates to working for free, we can finally say we have earned this doctorate of pharmacy. This week, the stress level increased as we moved into the next phase, passing the boards. But I urge you today to put that focus out of your mind. This moment is fleeting. For many of us, it will be the last time we walk across a stage and boast our accomplish accomplishments after years of hard work. A classmate shared a quote with me recently that really struck home. The present time is short, the future is doubtful, the past is certain. The last four years have been a whirlwind, but pharmacy school is complete. We don't know what will happen tomorrow, but today is a celebration of our accomplishments. Live in this moment, brag about it, but most of it, enjoy the feeling and remember the hard work it took to get here. Congratulations, class of 2019. I know you're all going to have amazing accomplishments as pharmacists. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vinick. You have been a delight at CHSU, and we look forward to seeing you progress through your career. In closing, today is a special day for our graduates, our university, and our community. Graduates, you entered the hall today as students, and you depart as our second ever Dr. Pharmacy graduates in the entire Central Valley region. 
You will forever be in my heart as you and I begin our journey at California Health Sciences University simultaneously. While you've worked diligently over the last four years, I'm certain you will continue to face challenges over your new career, especially since you all have entrepreneurial spirits and deserve to advance and change the field of pharmacy and make our world a better place through your service as healthcare providers. And one of those challenges is passing your board exams with 100% passage rate, right? Yes. Yes. But I'm confident that you will be successful in this goal with the education and preparation we've provided you. You can take your next steps in your career confidently, knowing that this entire campus community will continue to stand behind you, lift you up when you need it, and learn from you as you continue to grow professionally. There is no question that this community is behind you, willing to give you the opportunities that you desire and truly deserve. So colleagues, on behalf of the trustees, administration, faculty, preceptors, staff, and current students, and alumni of CHSU, we are beyond proud of you and wish you continued success, prosperity, and good health. Graduates, congratulations again on your well-deserved achievement. We look forward to keeping in touch with you and sharing all the good news of your future endeavors. Family, friends, and guests, we kindly ask that you remain at your seats and keep the aisles clear as the faculty and graduates recess. Following the recessional, we invite you to depart out in the main lobby and join us for a reception in the outdoor pavilion for some light refreshments. Your graduate will be joining you in about 10 minutes after they take some photos and collect their belongings. On behalf of the faculty, leadership, and board of trustees, we look forward to seeing you at the reception and thank you for joining us here today for our CHSU College of Pharmacy Class of 2019 graduation. Thank you. <laughs>